Hello and welcome to this video about the strange case of Lindsay Shepherd versus the University Diversity and Equity Office. This incident happened around November 2017, so I've really jumped on this one nice and quick. I first heard about this on the Rubin Report, which I will link to below the video. This story takes place in Canada. To help to understand the Lindsay Shepherd discussion, it's useful to know a bit more about Professor Jordan B. Peterson. Fortunately, Channel 4 have done some work on this in the last few days. I will show a clip from the notorious Kathy Newman interview, and I'll also show how Joe Rogan approaches the same guest on his show with respect. Personally, I think Joe Rogan's approach is best, adult and respectful. Jordan Peterson is a Canadian clinical psychologist, cultural critic and professor of psychology at the University of Toronto. He has been in the news recently due to his opposition of Canadian Bill C-16, which was passed on the 19th of June 2017. The bill adds gender expression and gender identity to Canada's Human Rights Code and to the Criminal Code's Hate Crime section. Critics warn that under Bill C-16, Canadians who deny gender theory could be charged with hate crimes. Contrary to popular belief, Dr. Peterson is not in trouble for anything he did or didn't do in relation to any transgender students. He has in fact received some praise in the mail from trans individuals. Professor Peterson has expressed rational concerns about compelled speech. For example, being forced by law to use the plural they instead of he or she in certain circumstances. So at last, we turn to Lindsay Shepherd, a graduate student studying her MA in Cultural Analysis and Social Theory and a teaching assistant in communication at Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo, Ontario. To stimulate a discussion in class, she showed about four minutes of a debate between Professors Jordan Peterson and Nicholas Matt on the agenda with Steve Pakin, which was shown on TV Ontario. Sometime later, Lindsay was informed that a complaint had been made. She was called in for a meeting with a representative from the Diversity and Equity Office. Lindsay expected things to get ridiculous, so she recorded the discussion on her laptop. I will play some audio from that discussion, as well as a small clip from the agenda, the debate which essentially prompted this whole incident. Present in the Wilfrid Laurier University audio discussion are Professor Rambukana, Assistant Professor Community Studies, Dr. Herbert Pimlot, Associate Professor Communication Studies, and finally, Adria Joel, diversity and equity official. She's in charge of gendered violence and sexual assault prevention. The most important thing to know about all this is that there was actually no complaint directly from anyone who was in the class. Lindsay has become an accidental hero to the free speech movement and has gone from no presence on social media to 41,000 Twitter followers in a couple of months. You may remember the story of the teaching assistant at Wilfrid Laurier University who was reprimanded in a meeting with several faculty members. Lindsay Shepard was teaching a communi communications class about the use of general gender neutral pronouns. As part of her class that day, she showed a video of a debate on the issue, including a professor who does not believe that they is a proper substitute for him or her is one or multiple students who've come forward saying that this is something that they were concerned about and that it made them uncomfortable. Okay, that was the conversation with her professor, Dr. Uh, Rambukana. But it turns out there were no complaints. After an independent investigation, Laurier's president, Deborah McClatchy, issued a statement last night saying there were numerous errors in judgment in that meeting and before, here's what McClatchy said in part. In fact, the meeting should never have happened at all. No formal complaint nor informal concern relative to a Laurier policy was registered about the screening of the video. This was confirmed 
in the fact-finding report. Joining me for reaction on this is Lindsay Shepard, the teaching assistant at the center of the story. She joins me from Vancouver. Lindsay, what's your reaction? Um, I think there's a lot to celebrate in the statement, um, but it's there's also some things I'm skeptical but, of as but well. Let me, let, me, let me ask you about that one particular part, that there was never any complaint. We listened to that video. You asked numerous times, you were told there was a complaint. You never got any details to learn there was no complaint. What's your reaction to that? It was definitely really shocking. Um, I mean, the, the story is there was a student who was concerned about the content of the tutorial but they were just having a discussion um, and then a representative or staff member from the on-campus Rainbow Center, which is the LGBTQ collective, took it upon themselves to complain to Professor Rambucana, who then brought me into that meeting. Okay, so this is the point where the Channel 4 clip should be. I uploaded with that in and Channel 4 blocked my video worldwide, so I took it down. To learn more about Professor Peterson, I recommend the Joe Rogan discussion linked below. Boom. Welcome back, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. How are you? Not too bad. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. You look like uh, um, a man who is dealing with a considerable amount of stress, but is handling it well. Yeah, well, I hope that's true. I think the first part of it's true. I hope the second part is true. I read that you were denied a grant for the first time in in your history as an academic. Yes. And you think this is all based on your outspoken and very public um, denouncing of the political correctness and of all this stuff that you've been going through over the past more than a year now. I don't know because I haven't got the full commentary on the grant yet. I only found out that it was denied and it takes the granting agency a while to send out the full report. I've heard from other people. I know some other people who I would consider relatively high profile researchers who also didn't get funded this round. So there might be multiple reasons, but I can't help suspect that the fact that the grant application concentrated on delineating the personality characteristics of politically correct belief might have had something to do with it. Yeah, so, that, still a taboo subject. It's fascinating that thinking and, and thinking and pondering and examining certain types of behavior would still be a taboo subject. Yeah, it is amazing, all right, and becoming more taboo all the time, I would say. I don't think the universities are, have, I think they're getting worse still, and it'll be a while before they get better. I, I shouldn't say that so globally, but it's certainly the case with the humanities and much of the social sciences. Well, it seems globally. I mean, uh, not necessarily in terms of uh, all the different subjects, but certainly in terms of what you uh, teach and what you're involved in. And um, it just, it's so, I mean, I hate to use the word, but it's so regressive to put restrictions on the examining of thinking in a university. I mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, Let me read this tweet to you and I'll get you to respond to it because I think it's instructive of the conversation that just took place between the two of you. Uh, can someone please explain to Jordan B. Peterson that there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom from consequence? Do you agree there's a difference? Well, certainly there's a difference. And are you prepared to suffer the consequences that society may deem you need to suffer because of your views? I'm, yes, I'm prepared to do that. What does so, that entail? Are you open to learning? Well, hang That's on. That's not the question. Hang on, that, that wasn't the question. It's That's true. right. Well, so what am I willing to do? Uh, you know, well, I think that the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal is probably obligated by their own tangled web to, to bring me in front of it. If they find me, I won't pay it. If they put me in jail, I'll go on a hunger strike. I'm not thought, doing this. That's that. Mm -hmm. I'm not using the wor words that other people require me to use, especially if they're made up by radical left-wing ideologues. That might have been seen as problematic by... Uh by some of the students, maybe even threatening? Um, I, don't, I don't see how someone would rationally think it was threatening. Um, I, I could see how it might challenge their existing ideas, but for me, that's, that's the spirit of the university, is challenging ideas that you already have. And I don't know who this came from. I would be interested to see the original complaint or complaints because like, I don't really have any context like, as to what exactly their problem was. Sorry, can I, um, sorry to interrupt, but can I just ask Lindsay to maybe just provide us with a full thing? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nathan, I don't, yeah. I, I just like to hear the whole, like, your, 
what 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 took place. So if you would just give us the whole story, yeah, and then sure. and then and then sorry, but I yeah. I just feel that because I'm mm -hmm. just sitting in and I. Yeah. Okay. So um, we we have to teach about grammar, mm -hmm. and in the Pearson book there was a section about pronouns and using like gendered language. So I wanted to make it more engaging. So what I did is we were talking about um, in papers using they as as like a singular. And then we were also talking about like his and hers and like how to construct sentences with that. And then to contextualize it, I brought up like a, a YouTube debate. So a debate with both sides, Jordan Peterson's sides and this this fellow named Nicholas Matt, who's also a prof at U of T. Okay. And they Could you, do you have the name of the video? Okay. Um it was from the agenda with Steve Pakin. Okay. It was like a YouTube debate. It was one hour long, but I showed about five minutes. Okay. Um and then some I mean the students were were very interested, I could tell. They're, all of their eyes were on the screen. And after when we had a debate, there were people of all opinions. And like from, from what I could see, it was a very friendly debate. Um, obviously this person who had an issue did not express it to me. They just went straight to whoever. I don't, I don't really know what happened, so. Okay, um, just for some additional context. So uh, you come, you came from U of T, is that right? No. No, oh, you oh, from- SFU. Uh, oh, from SFU, okay, so you weren't. Um, like one of Jordan Peterson's students. No. Like that. Um, so just to give you some context about Jordan Peterson is, he is a, a figure that's um, basically highly involved with the with the alt right. Um, mm -hmm. He, yes, uh, the uh, the website Rebel Media, which is a, an alt right website, has uh, been involved in raising multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, for uh, his research, it's uh, he as as uh, a week and a week and a half ago, uh, he gave a lecture in which he identified student protesters um, like by posting their social media accounts so that people would uh, bully and, and threaten them online. He, he lectures about um, basically like critiquing uh, feminism, critiquing. Um, trans rights. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar. Like, I, I, I follow like, him. Not critiquing you. Okay, so, but so. the thing is, can you shield people from those ideas? Am I supposed to comfort them and uh, make sure that they are insulated away from this? Like, is that what the point of this is? Because to me, that is so against what a university is about. Mm -hmm. So against it. I was not taking sides. I was presenting both arguments. Okay. So the thing is about this is if you're presenting something like this, it uh, you have to think about the kind of teaching climate that you're creating. And this is actually, these arguments are counter to the Canadian um, human rights code. Uh, ever since, and I know that you talked about um, C-16, ever since this past, it is discriminatory to be targeting someone um, due to their gender identity or gender expression. So bringing something like that up in class, not critically, and I understand that you're trying to like... It was critical. No. I, I introduced it critically. How so? Like I, as like in, I said, I, it was in the spirit of debate. Okay, in the spirit of the debate is slightly different than being like, okay, this is this is a, like a problematic idea that we want to, we want to unpack. But that's but, taking sides. Yes. Like it's taking sides for me to be like, oh, look at this guy. Like everything that comes out of his mouth is BS, but we're going to watch anyway. Okay. So I understand the position that you're coming from and your positionality, but the reality is that it has created a, to a, a toxic climate for some of the students. It, you know, it's, how many? It's great that. Who? <laughs> like how many? Okay. One? May I, may I speak? I'm, uh, I have is... no, I have no concept of, of like how many people complain. Like, what their complaint was. You haven't showed me the, the complaint. Yes, I, I understand that this is upsetting, but there's also confidential, confi confidentiality matters. The number of people is confidential? Yes. Yeah. Is one or multiple students who have come forward saying that this is something that they were concerned about and that it made them uncomfortable. If this is, for example, a trans student, this is basically debating whether or not a trans student should have rights within one of their classes. Um, and that's not something that is really acceptable 
in the context of the kind of learning environment that we're trying to create. It would be a, the equivalent of debating whether or not, uh, you know, a student of color should have rights or, or should be allowed to, to be married. Uh, do you see where, like, how this is not, this is not something like that's intellectually neutral, that is kind of up for debate? This, I mean, this is the Charter of Rights and But freedoms. it is up for debate. 